Good morning, Steve Barcello from the Cryptozoology Paranormal Museum, heading out to Medoc Mountain State Park. Uh, the plan is to interview a gentleman who had a Bigfoot sighting a few months back. I haven't been able to catch up with him with all the craziness going on. Well, he's back around, reached out to me, so we're going to be meeting down there. Now, his sighting was a matter of him shooting video. He's a Bigfooter. He's out looking for Bigfoot. And uh, just shooting video and, I guess, talking. I haven't seen the whole video. But whatever, he re reviews the video and he catches something really unique in the shot. Sends it to us. I was impressed. I sent it to George. He cleaned it up a little bit. He's impressed. Now, this is the same spot where George had a sighting a few years back. Not too far from where my sighting was down behind the campgrounds. The Medox a hotbed, so the whole area is Hollister, Littleton, I mean, you name it. But we just had another sighting two days ago, and that was Johnny. And uh, there's no photo. He saw something. Hopefully, he's going to post a video and I can link it in here. So, this has got to be. Uh, a lot of stuff in the same area. This is all, I want to go there, we're going to check it out, and we'll give you more distances once we get the interview. So this is just a little shot of me getting down there to do these interviews and meet up with everybody and uh, kind of reenact the whole thing. And it's an excuse for all of us to talk and kind of, you know, put our heads together and try to figure out what, what this actually was. Is it really a Bigfoot? Was it, we're going to go back and see if we can find a, a tree that looks like this or something, you know, just kind of debunk it if it's, if, it, if it's debunkable. So anyway, but we know that's a hot area, so. What I want to try to do today is recreate a picture that I extracted from a video. It's almost a year to the day. It was October the 19th. Today's October the 18th, 2024. And uh, so the, the leaves, you know, the foliage coloration and thickness should be about the same so this should be a good recreation um, and we can be able to tell That's hard to knock. how high so this should be a good recreation um, and we can be able to tell That's hard to knock. how high so this should be a good recreation um, and we can be able to tell That's hard to knock. how high you the subject it? should be and I did hear a wood knock right behind us down the trail being I just drove by the pavilion, there's nobody over there. Not a person over there. You want to hike on eggs? I got you in shadow too, where I'm yeah. here. So. I'm going to come back and recreate that. This might be a good assessment for you. Because you don't have to mess with it. Oh, yeah, just keep it on. Did you hear that? You guys hear that movement? Something going on. Could be a deer, but you know, you think about it, George. Construction there, construction here. Somebody got a thermal up and working. There we go. Good. Well, the other knock was down here. Why don't we take that trail along the water? We're getting all kinds of knocks and stuff over here. We just got here. We just literally starting to talk. We've gotten multiple knocks and activity. I'm going to walk in the trail.
right here, because this tree up here was moving. I'm looking for prints. I heard a splash. Is there something? Yeah. I, I don't know. I must have something because this, this tree branch right here. What have you got over here? A log? Yeah. And it, it was. Hang on, let me get up on you. Right there. And that's not from any of these trees. And it was something hid in these trees over here. Something going on here today. As soon as we got here, we got a knock in the distance. Yeah. I still want to go check out what that came from. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's head back down that trail. tree right there. Where you sort? Where the two apples were stuck. Oh, okay. Well, after I had left the apples, uh, having heard a, a warning whistle to get away from the apples, the whistle came from the left side. I proceeded about 25 yards to approximately this point, and I heard off to the right, boom, 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 crack, really loud footsteps and a tree break, as if something bipedal and heavy had run away and had stepped on a limb in the process. And that came from the south side of this trail. The whistle had come from the north side. So I'm feeling like there was a pair of them here. In addition to what, you know, whatever may have been at the car, you know, on the first video. Uh, that one could have been the same one and he could have followed me up this side of the trail. So there was at least two, but possibly three that day. Um, after that, you know, being alone and unarmed and nobody knowing where I was, I opted to leave. Yeah. And I went to the other spot near the picnic shelter and took that trail down to the river and that's where I found the 15 inch track. And I mapped that out and uh, it's about 900 yards as the crow fry flies through the, through the woods. Now that thing you got in the background of your video, where do you think that one was located? Are you sure of the location? Oh or? yeah, yeah, I, had, I was taking that, was, that was the first video I shot, so it'd be right, right out of the car. I was in the, standing at the parking area actually, oh, at, okay. at the trailhead, and I was talking about, you know, the the area, the habitat, the food sources, water sources, and just kind of narrating it. And I panned by whatever it was, and then panned by it again, panned all the way around looking at the river, and then came back. So the figure is there at the 12 second mark and at the 23, 24 second mark on the second pass. But then on the third pass at a minute 20, he's not standing there. So whatever that subject was that's in right. that photo moved yep so it's not a it's not a human shaped tree stump yeah <laughs> all right steve barcello we're back at the cryptozoology paranormal museum we all just met uh we went down to talk to doug about his sighting which was last year october would you say 19th october 19th 23 Flying there and uh, so we went back to the area where you had your sighting, which I didn't realize. I thought it was farther down. I was surprised that you told us it was right at the parking lot there yeah. where you were filming yourself. Anyway, while we were there, we were literally just setting up. And I don't think I was recording yet at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't think so. And uh, we were just literally getting stuff together and kind of discussing things. And uh, we, well, I'll let you guys tell. We got a tree knock. So this should be a good recreation. Um, and we can be able to tell. That's our knock. How high. Got a tree knock. Then as we're walking down, because it's at the other end of the uh, service road, so we're thinking, we'll head down that way and see what happens. Well, as we start within maybe a minute, 
we hear something splash, but I, I was behind the guys. They were in front of me. I turned around. I could see one of the tree limbs shaking like something hit it. And we went over there, and there's a 18-inch log floating in the water. So apparently it looks to me, because there's no type of tree around there that looked like that. They were all small. This was fairly, I don't know, maybe three, four inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it, it's floating in the water. And there, I was like, man, I think something threw something at us. And yeah. they, we all went up there to take a look at it. And we scanned with the thermal and everything, didn't see anything. But all this occurred within like the first few minutes we got out of the car. You know, like the yeah. first minute. Yeah. It was just yeah. crazy. It was like all of a sudden we're going to need a knock, a clear knock here and then something here. It was like almost like misdirection, like it was trying to get our attention or send attention to someone else saying that somebody's here. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. guess we weren't the normal just hikers or joggers just kind of get out there and start doing our thing. We obviously had equipment with us and we were discussing maybe. And it, it sounded to me like there were, it was a three part noise, like a, a break and then a contact, tree to tree contact, and then the a splash. splash yeah. mm -hmm. So I'm thinking this thing was thrown from across the river and uh, impacted a tree on this side yeah. and then fell down. Yeah. And uh, when, when we initially went over there, you could still see some, oh, yeah. like, ripple movement yeah. in, the, yeah. in the water and then... Then you know there's the, the we're literally heading one direction and turning around <laughs> going back to yeah. the other direction. Now something I'm not going to go into detail a lot. I mean, we can talk about it a wee bit. Johnny just had a sighting yesterday. Yep. He just sent us some video, just brief him just literally talking in the park. I'm going to let him. I don't want to rain on his prey, like I said. Let him do it. But it's just important to mention that because we already set up to meet you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we did this because of his sighting. Right. And uh, so, but just to mention that this is a hotbed. You've had your sighting right yeah. across from there. Yeah. We had a couple that was camping there. We had a sighting just south of this along. Yeah. The, it actually turns out there's a game trail that goes along there. Yeah. I mean, it's been so many sightings of this area. Your original footprint yeah. was we're just down, down this trail. Yeah. A lot of the prints from the museum are from that area. So it's crazy. A lot of activity right there. Yeah. It's a hotbed. Like yeah. you were just talking about the river. Mm -hmm. The river seems to be their highway. I right. mean, it seems that maybe it's because they can escape from one side to the other. And that river really fluctuates. Sometimes you can basically walk across it. Other times it's 15 feet deep. I mean, I mean oh, the area yeah. floods. I mean, yeah, the bridge goes does. under. They'll shut it down. Yeah. Do you want to go into a little bit of your story, what you happened to you a year ago? Sure. Um, I had just parked there at the trailhead, and there were no other cars there. It was just me, and uh, I got out and I began to just narrate a, a video. Um, and I was panning across the forest, um, just talking about you know the cover and the availability of wildlife and the availability of water resources, and uh, you know what a great locale that might be, you know, for some uh, primate to uh, you know to live. Mm -hmm. And I made basically made three passes. I panned around as I was talking and then panned back all the way around to my left and then came back a third time. And I didn't notice it at the moment. Um, I think I must have noticed something dark there because on my first pass I kind of hesitated and then, then kept going. Um, I was more interested in you know trying to look down the trail itself to make sure there wasn't anything moving down that way. Um, and it wasn't until much later that I examined that uh, video and I saw that there's a subject standing there at about the 10 or 12 second mark and then on the pass back at about 23 to 24 seconds it's there but slightly leaned forward and the left leg kind of moved out and then on the third pass at a minute 20 there's no subject there it's gone. Crazy. Now, were you um, filming forward, or were you filming yourself, and you got it in the background? No, I was. I was looking through the camera, filming out. Okay. And uh, so that's probably why I didn't notice it at the right. time, was because I'm looking through the small, you know, lens of the camera. Okay. So I continued walking on down that trailhead, continuing to narrate a little bit and talking about wildlife in the area, and you know, bear, bobcat, copperheads, you know, timber rattlers some of the different things I'm looking out for. So I'm probably spending more time watching where I'm walking <laughs> than watching the woods. Um, but I, as I got down there, maybe a couple hundred yards down that trail, I noticed on the left side uh, there were two apples stuck in a tree, which I thought was very unusual. So I thought that, okay, well, you know, Steve told me there had been some sightings here, so 
someone must be, you know, leaving an offering uh, for the for the Bigfoots. Uh, either that or they've left something and the Bigfoot took it and brought the apples back for them in a, in a trade gesture. Um, I'm more inclined to believe it was just an investigator leaving something there to see if it would be gone. So as I approached that tree, I was interested in knowing whether or not there were any partially eaten apple cores around the, around the tree on the ground. Uh, maybe something I could pick up and get a bite mark out of, you know, and, and get an idea of what size animal might have bit out of it. But there were no eaten uh, apples on the ground, just the two uh, bright red apples stuck up in the branch of the tree. But as I approached that, and I had no intention of disturbing the apples, but as I approached that, there was a very loud whistle, which came from ahead of me and to my left, which would have been on the north side of that trail. It was a really loud whistle, not like a, a, a Bob White or any other type of bird. It, it sounded like uh, something with very large lung capacity, frankly. Um, so I took that as a maybe a cautionary signal, so I backed away from the tree and continued on down the, the trail about another 25 yards. And I'm still videoing and, and talking, and I hear this, you know, loud running through the forest. It's kind of a boom, 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 crack. And then on the fourth or fifth step, you know, a really loud crack as if it stepped on a, a tree that was down. Um, but you could tell that it was not something fleet of foot like a deer, you know. Um, it, this was heavy and bipedal, clearly, to me, just from the rhythm of the boom, 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 crack. Um, so and that was on the south side of the trail. That was on the south side of the trail. And I had been kind of watching the trail in front of me, so nothing had crossed. Uh, so whatever made the whistle was still on that, you know, north side of the trail, and this was on the south side of the trail. Um, but whatever it was was uh, obviously heavy, and uh, uh, it did pick up. The sound did pick up a little bit on my camera, but... Of course, that you know, little cell phone doesn't pick up sound the way your ear does. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's audible on there, but it's um, not, not real heavy, heavy or audible. Um, but the, the creature or whatever it was that made these steps was obviously very large, and it was off the trail, um, so it wasn't somebody running or jogging, um, and there were no other cars at the trailhead that day. Um, so I decided that I should back off. You know, I'm unarmed, I'm alone, nobody knows where I'm at. So I decided to, uh, you know, back away and, and you know, take precaution, uh, not knowing how aggressive this uh, Bigfoot might be. So I got in the car and I went down to the next spot that Steve had told me about, which is uh, the trail near the uh, picnic area, the big picnic shelter. So I parked down the picnic shelter, and that's about a mile by car. But when you get along that trail and you're walking up there, uh, it kind of closes in. It's not as far. Um, so I went walking through that, uh, that trail that goes down to the river from the picnic shelter, and I heard a very loud owl, um, which I thought was unusual. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a clear day, bright and sunny. Um, the owls that I'm accustomed to hearing, it's, you know, evening time. You know, just at the last bit of daylight right. or in the dark of night. Not at 3 o'clock in the day, you know, with a bright sunshine. Uh, but it was, a very, it was also the very loudest owl I think I've ever heard, too. Uh, and I made a mention on the videotape as I'm narrating. I said, well, that's either the biggest owl I've ever heard or it's something pretending to be an owl. Mm -hmm. So I continued down this trail, and uh, when the trail gets near the water, I decided to venture on down closer to the river to see if I could see a track. And I did see a track uh, 15 and a half inches long, um, and I got pictures of that. And uh, Steve, I think you may have a picture of that. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Later, uh, checked the uh, an aerial photograph in, in, uh, of the area and measured on my phone the distance from the approximate location of the track 
to the approximate location of where I'd been, I like to say, run out of the woods. And it's about 900 meters. I've been wanting to get back up here ever since to go back and recreate that photo. And we, you know, we did as best uh, we could, uh, got approximately where the subject was standing and approximately the same angle. Um, I think I probably would like to come back and try to do that again because I'm not sure we had quite the, the right position of the uh, where the photograph was taken from. I'm convinced that uh, two things about that, uh, that su the subject on that day last year. Number one, it's a lot bigger than me, at least by a head taller. Um, and number two, it's a lot closer yeah. than it looks in the in the photo. Absolutely. Uh, that surprised us. We yeah. couldn't believe, even if we came back here, we're waiting for you to come back, we're both going like, that was incredibly close. That was close. Yeah. It's, I don't think you're looking at over 30 yards on that. I really yeah. Know. yeah. If that, you know, yeah. I'm thinking 45, 50 feet maybe. Yeah. 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 60 feet most. So, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't far over in there. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, Kind of, shakes you, story. kind of shakes you up when you, when yeah. you look back at that and think, wow. And you thing. said you didn't hear anything or smell anything? You were just no, narrating um, your video? Yeah, just narrating the video. You know, it, it wasn't a particularly windy day. It was kind of, you know, quiet yeah. like it was today. Very mm -hmm. very similar weather conditions. Cold nights, warmer, warmer in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So everything was uh, very similar today to how it was a year ago. It's, it's cool. And uh, it just... It's just uh, phenomenal. It makes you want to come back. You know, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to leave today, yeah. but I want to plan a trip back as soon sure. as I can. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing over there that could have been mistaken for the subject in that yeah, picture. There's no logs, no big no. trees. We no. looked the area. It was like, you know, yeah. sometimes you can get like a a couple of uh, rotted trees out there, you know, from a distance with some leaves on it can look humanoid. Right. There's nothing there. Yeah. Right. Nothing in that area. Nothing so. at all. Not even old rotted stumps that we could say, oh, that might have been here a while yeah. ago. And Yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's wide yeah. open. Crazy. Now, yours, the thing that was right close to you was south of that parking lot. Johnny's sighting yesterday, which I'm not going to go into detail because I don't know much. Apparently, he saw legs. That was north. I'm not even sure exactly where. I don't know if you know. But uh, uh, he look, he was definitely excited oh, yeah. by yeah. the video. We could see you know, something yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Your sighting goes back to what date was that? Uh, August 5th, 2021. Yep, and that was pretty much the same side of the stream that Johnny's was, but yep. yours was nighttime. It was a thermal image. Place yeah, never another ended. incredible day. Yeah. This place never ceases to yeah, meet amaze us. and uh, never disappoints. Yeah, yeah, it definitely doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't forget to look at the rest of this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we're going to get back out there. I mean, our, our juices are going now after mm -hmm. all this stuff today. I mean, and the leaves are falling out of the trees, and now's the time to go out there. Uh, when did they say the camping April. area? April. April. It's supposed to be finished by April at okay. Medoc Mountain, the campsites. So people can go back camping there, and then you can be there overnight and stuff like that. Right now, you got to be out of there by dusk. But uh, All right, we'll talk to you soon.